Hi, welcome to our workshop detailing the news and events this week starting uh, September the 2nd. A new month, uh, a new week in the month and being the first week of the month it's non-farm payroll week, uh, it's the employment data from the states. We've also got uh, five interest rate decisions no less this week as well. But we start certainly today um, a little bit quiet with the US Labor Day in the states, it's a federal holiday so all the markets in the US are shut which is uh, reducing volatility in uh, stocks, bonds, uh, foreign exchange. Um, although um, a very strong start to the week as tends to happen on the first trading day of the month with both uh, all European indices sharply higher, uh, probably on the back of uh, the manufacturing data out, in this, uh, out from China, uh, the HSBC uh, final manufacturing PMI confirming the positive news there. Only just in an expansionary mode but nevertheless it is expanding just which is better than it had been of late. Um, but Without further ado, let's just get into the data for the rest of the week. Um, we had the uh, manufacturing data in the UK, the manufacturing PMI a lot stronger than expected at 57.2, firmly above the 50 uh, level, which is the difference between expansion and uh, contraction. So a very positive uh, outcome there uh, from the UK. But let's just um, jump now to the first uh, uh, interest rate decision. We have the uh, Reserve Bank of Australia um, announcing its interest rate decision uh, overnight, Monday night, Tuesday morning. Uh, we're not expecting uh, any change there. Um, we did actually get a rate cut in August uh, from uh, uh, two and three quarters to two and a half percent, but I'm not expecting any change uh, this time round. Um, then uh, in the afternoon, we do have construction PMI in the UK, but I think uh, in light of all the events taking place, I think that's probably going to be slightly less important. Uh, we then have uh, the US reading on manufacturing PMI, uh, an important number, the Institute of Supply Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index. Again, any figure above 50 is expan expansionary mode. We had a very strong number in uh, July, so uh, uh, we expect a little bit of a pullback here, but nothing too material, 54.2 uh, expected uh, there. And then we head on into uh, Wednesday. Wednesday, we have our services PMI, so this is what the US called non-manufacturing PMI from the UK. Uh, again, uh, some very positive numbers in the UK previous month. We're expecting a number there or thereabouts, perhaps a little bit softer. Uh, and then we have the U US trade balance, which has been uh, performing pretty well recently as uh, imports have uh, contracted somewhat by 2.5% just recently. Um, we are, though, expecting a slight or a modest increase in the trade balance there due to seasonal factors, but the general trend has been positive in the trade balance, a deficit of 38.6 billion expected uh, there. Um, we have um, uh, some data in the evening which tends to take a bit of a back seat, the Beige Book, which is can have uh, an impact on the market. It's uh, a sort of a synopsis of uh, economic conditions in the federal districts as reported. Um, so that can be quite interesting at 7 o'clock on Wednesday evening. And then we uh, head on into Thursday with a, a slew of uh, announcements from uh, central banks. We start with uh, the Bank of Japan. We're not expecting anything there from the Japanese rate decision. Um, they've done a lot uh, over this the course of this year. Um, there may be a more of a discussion about the proposed or mooted sales tax rise, uh, but other than that we're not expecting any announcement from the Bank of Japan. Uh, and then we head on into our UK announcement from the Monetary Policy Committee here in the UK. No news expected there, no change on the asset purchase facility or indeed our base rate at half percent. Data has been picking up of late and I think that'll quell any uh, expectation of any change in the um, quantitative easing program there uh, and then there's a statement later on by the Monetary Policy Committee and then that's followed up at quarter to one uh, tomorrow uh, on um, Thursday lunchtime with the uh, ECB's announcement again nothing expected there we then have a press conference at 1.30 which does shed uh, some light on the um, thinking of the uh, ECB but as I say we're not expecting uh, uh, too much uh, uh, out from the ECB this time round. Um, being uh, the uh, week for non-farm payroll, we actually have the first bit of data 
uh, on employment or unemployment in the US with the release from the uh, private uh, payroll company ADP have their own take on non-farm employment change. So rather curiously the data is exactly the same number as expected from the um, Bureau of Labor Statistics on Friday. So uh, a slight pullback from uh, last month's heady number of 200,000 although it should be noted that the actual Bureau of Labor Statistics their non-farm employment change is expected to be higher than the one reported in August. Nevertheless this is what's expected um, just remember it's the consensus that we're interested in not the actual uh, number it's how it compares with what was expected so any number higher than 181 on Friday uh, could have a rekindle further fears about the size of the proposed tapering of quantitative easing by the Fed. Um, and uh, let's just quickly go back to Thursday. One thing I should also mention, we've got the weekly unemployment claims as well. That's been hovering between well, 320 and 330 again. A good pointer to that figure on Friday. And then we have uh, the non-manufacturing PMI, or what we call over here the service sector, Institute of Supply and Management. Um, that's still a very strong number, bearing in mind it was a very, very good number in uh, previously the previous month at 56. Slight pullback to 55.2, but nothing too much to worry about there. Uh, still uh, particularly strong uh, data there. And as I said, Friday, manufacturing production in the UK, but that really will be overshadowed by the very important uh, non-farm data coming out at 1.30, which we've just discussed. Thanks very much for listening. Um, we reconvene at uh, 8 o'clock on Thursday for a run-through uh, of events to there. Thank you very much. Bye for now. If you would like more information about trading the right way, TrendSignal is giving you the opportunity to see and hear about its services live at a free online seminar. Take a look at the TrendSignal website for the latest events and to book your free place.